this is the most exciting part of this day and uh, I, I'd like to like a show of hands if anybody here hasn't heard of Alexa oh there are people who haven't heard of Alexa so without further ado I want to introduce to the stage Adam Burns director of business development Alexa voice service Alexa please Adam Yeah, good. This is like the weirdest thing because I can't, I can hear myself speak, but with the Bluetooth, it's like impossible. I don't get any feedback. So uh, if I crack jokes and you guys don't laugh, then it's going to be really bad. So hopefully, hopefully this will work out. This is the first time I've done it. Um, so as the, uh, to start off, just let me introduce myself. My name is Adam Burns. I lead uh, the Alexa business development group uh, for the Alexa voice service. So my team works with third parties to take the, the magic of Alexa and to put it into their products. Uh, so I have a team in the US, uh, throughout Europe, Japan, uh, and here in India as well. But before I start and uh, throw a bunch of boring slides at you, I thought it'd be great to play a video that shows some of the capabilities of Alexa. And the video that I'm gonna show you, we actually did Two years ago, we, we, um, we filmed it together with one of our automotive partners, Jaguar. And when we did it at the time, and I would show it to people, I would tell them, everything you see here is live, it's, it, it's working. And people were incredulous. They just couldn't believe that we were doing these things. And today, if you have an Alexa device, you look at this and you'd be like, yeah, of course, like this is just normal stuff. But two years ago even, people didn't believe it. Um, and so let me show the, the video and, and give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So with So what's my schedule like today? You have one appointment today. Work or play? Alexa, flip a coin. Flipping. It's heads. Okay, so just in that one short video, you can see our first party products, the Echo family of, of devices, doing everything from invoking a skill to turn on, uh, to open the garage door on, and other smart home things to playing my favorite soundtrack in the shower, starting at tea kettle, um, all of that, even two years ago, people just couldn't believe. People couldn't believe that that, that happened. Um, and now, again, we think that it's, it's, it's commonplace. To give you an idea, of, uh, of where I work and what we do, there's really, think of four key parts to Alexa. There's the Alexa voice service on the far left. That's the group that I work with. So if you wanna take the magic of Alexa and embed it into your product, some partners would be partners like Sonos, Jabra, Bose, and others that wanna put Alexa in there, in, into their devices. They work with my team and our engineers and our business and our marketing folks to basically make that happen. On the other side uh, of our world is the Alexa Skills Kit. Skills, think of them as apps. It's sort of our paradigm for apps. It's how you extend our platform and you can build relatively quickly. We actually think you could do it in probably a weekend to prototype and get your first skill out there. Um, that allows you to create these, these skills and I'll talk more about them, more about them later. A third part of my team is uh, the Alexa Fund. We've announced both a US-based fund and an international fund. 
Uh, we have over $100 million in that fund alone that we invest uh, in young startup uh, ignition type companies that are doing incredible things with voice. And all of this is supported by, and, and you know, part of what we do is working with our retail team. So if you build an AVS product or you build an ask skill, our marketing team is gonna get behind it with amazon.in and amazon.com or whatever the right uh, retail venue is to support the product and get it out there and get it in front of our customers uh, and into their hands as quickly as possible. What are people saying about Alexa? Well, one of the things about Amazon is I, I think as a company, we're a humble company, so we don't tend to focus on accolades and things very much. But let's be clear, Alexa is a game changer. It's really changed the way we interface with technology, not just geeks and, and um, super uh, computer folks, everyone, every strata of society at different demographics, um, love and work with uh, Alexa on a daily basis. And I'll show you more stats about how they use Alexa, where they use it, and the things that today we wanna do and can hope of and think about from an innovation perspective. Kind of across the board, uh, one of the things about um, people when they talk to me about our Alexa products, our Echo branded products, and our third party products, some of the ones you see here, things like the Anchor, Roav, Viva, Polk Audio, um, the Pavilion Wave, the First Alert uh, Smoke Alarm. You can see here the range of form factors. Amazon would never do all of this. And the way we get to scale, the way we get all of these Alexa devices, and we hope one day to have a billion of these devices uh, in, in the world, the way we get there is through our third-party partnerships. And AVS is how we do that. So you'll see in the future, not only Alexa in cars, and we've talked about Ford and uh, Hyundai and Jaguar already, but you'll see it in computers. We've announced HP and a group of others, smart TVs, set-top boxes, wireless speakers, headsets, um, across the board, any product that you think um, would be uh, capable of having an internet connection, three simple things, an internet connection, a mic, and a speaker, that's really all it takes. And you can imagine even a future where some of our devices just had one of those or maybe two of those elements and they could drive to the best speaker in the house or the best speaker in the living room. So there's a ton of opportunity here that we haven't even really tapped into. You're just seeing the very beginnings of this in what we're doing. Again, if you ask Alexa today, you say, how old are you? She'll respond, three years old. If you think about all of what we've accomplished as uh, working with our third parties and all of the first party devices that we've released and all the launches and all the international geos, all of that has happened in three years. It's pretty amazing. So with that, I have another video that I'd like to play uh, for you. Venue and sports venue for Americans. Uh, and it's one of the few videos where you actually have Jeff Bezos in it, so I thought it'd be fun to play. So with that, could I ask you guys to play this video? In Austin, it's 60 degrees with a <laughs> Alexa? Amazon's Alexa lost her voice this morning, causing a Alexa lost her voice. How is that even possible? We have the replacements ready. Just say the word. And you're sure this is going to work? Yeah. Alexa, show me a recipe for a grilled cheese sandwich. Pathetic. You're 32 years of age, and you don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Its name is the recipe, you d like the how far is Mars? Oh, how far is Mars? Well, how am I supposed to know? I never been there. This guy want to go to Mars. <laughs> For what? There's not even oxygen there. Alexa, set the mood. Now setting the mood. You're in the bush. And you're just so dirty. And you're so sweaty. Because it's hot in that bush. Alexa, rebush. Re reboot. Alexa, play some country music. Oh, crap. I don't dance now, I make money moves. No, no, Alexa, country music. Alexa. I be in and not them dance so much, I know they tired of me. Alexa, call Brandon. I'm afraid Brandon is a little tied up. But do let me know if there's anything I can help you with. Jessica? Good boy. 
Thanks, guys, but I'll take it from here. It's great. Okay, um, so it should be back to me. Uh, so you can see, like, uh, you know, we try to take and make fun of ourselves, um, but uh, what's I think amazing about that video is uh, the truth is Alexa has become indispensable for people's lives. When I travel on vacation, um, I always bring an uh, Alexa-enabled device with me, actually the Anchor uh, Ufi Genie product, because uh, my kids are constantly asking Alexa stuff. Um, and so without it, uh, we would probably need to get a bunch of people to stand in uh, for us. I told you I'd talk about some of the stats. Amazon typically doesn't share a lot of data, um, but I, did, I was trying to extrapolate some key themes just to give you an idea of some things that I think are really groundbreaking and, and earth-shattering. Uh, the first stat uh, is 46% of all U.S. adults uh, use voice for uh, or voice search. It's pretty amazing. Think of the importance of search in the world and think how much of that is now being done through voice. It's pretty amazing. Uh, it's really changed the way people search for things. It's changed the way people search for information. It's changed the way people shop. Um, second thing is 55% of it use it because it's convenient. You can think about that only, not only in a mobile scenario, but also if people are in the kitchen and you're cooking or you're in a shower and you're taking a shower and you just don't want to get wet, those kind of things. It's, it's amazing if, if you can access technology from anywhere without having to necessarily uh, do it with your hands and, and your fingers. Uh, it's really an enabling technology. 60% of people use it four times a day. Think of that stat. Again, two years ago, this number would have probably been, you know, like zero. Percentage that use voice for, uh, uh, four times a day would have been almost non-existent. 91%, and this is sort of the last stat on this slide that I want to show you, uh, expect to buy a connected device um, in the future. What we see is when people buy an Alexa device or one of our AVS devices, it's a simplifying construct. So for the first time, they have it in their home, and instead of having to pull out an app and change the temp and, and unlock their phone uh, and then load the app and then f basically change the temperature of, let's say, their Nest thermostat, all they have to do is say, Alexa, make it warmer, or Alexa, make it cooler, or set the temperature to 22 degrees. Whatever that is, it's just voice-enabled and super simple. So you can do things like set the temperature to, to 22 and turn on the lights. You can concatenate things today. We couldn't do that even three months ago, right? Just very simple, basic human interaction to these things. And once you do it with one thing, whether it's a light or a thermostat or a front door with Ring, a company we just invested in, uh, in any of those scenarios, once you do it and you see that magic, you want to do more. And so over the past couple of days, I met with a bunch of press, and, and they were talking about how penetration of smart home is really low in India. It was low in the U.S. It's low in Japan. It's low everywhere. But that was a, a couple years ago or a year ago or today, depending on the market that you're in. But it's not going to be the way it is tomorrow or the year afterwards. And so part of what I try to tell people is get early onto that wave. Be part of that. Build products, build AVS products, build smart home products, build skills. Be part of changing the way people interact with technology. Build your businesses on those kind of things. A couple more stats, and then I'll, I'll try to, to, um, to talk more about, about direct content. But what are people doing with an Alexa device? Obviously, they ask questions like, who is Donald Trump? How old is Melania? Uh, things like that. Um, they also ask it to play music. The second most popular thing people use an Alexa device for is to play, you know, Coldplay or Johnny Cash or whatever your favorite music uh, uh, thing is. Checking the weather, obviously. At the very bottom, what's interesting is make a purchase. Now think about that. Amazon is investing massively in this space. And the lowest thing that people do is make a purchase. So. We believe in this. We think that that part is going to climb over time. We think that that's going to be a big and important part of why we're in this business. But it's a huge bet. It's a bet for us on the future, to the point I was just making. Um, and we think you should make this bet as well. Let me talk about this growth. Every time I do this slide, and I, I give this slide, I don't know, every month or two to an audience like, like you guys, I change all of, all of these numbers. I literally go to this one slide and start changing them. 
when I first started at Amazon, the number of Alexa skills uh, two years ago, let me just say two years ago, two years ago, uh, it was, we said thousands. Uh, it was like 2,000. Uh, today it's 40,000. 40,000 skills. Think about it. 40,000 apps. 40,000 skills. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of Alexa developers, people who've downloaded our SDKs or developing or prototyping or using our reference kits. That's just amazing. In three years, right? Um, tens of millions of Alexa-enabled devices are out in the field. Um, that's going to grow. It's going to grow exponentially. We think, again, we envision a world very soon where we have a billion devices, and that scale only comes from our third-party devices. We won't do that with our first-party devices like the Echo and the Spot uh, and the Dot alone. So how does this all connect? There's really, you know, think of, of Alexa as really, again, you know, a, a set of things that interact with the world. So I talked about an AVS product like a Sonos uh, One device or a Bose headset or a Ford car. Those devices can now interface with this rich f ecosystem of 40,000 skills to do things, you know, skills like Ola and um, Savin or, or Zomato even, right, here in India. But to do things like order an Uber or get a pizza um, or um, check the wait times at the airport or upgrade your flight doing, or checking the balance of your credit card, right, any of those kind of things. And at the same time, Alexa can be used to actuate over 20,000 smart home devices, right? Basically, any device that anybody's building today for the smart home supports Alexa. And the third is, there's a bunch of third-party services that Alexa can drive to and receive content from. I've listed some here, like Savin and, and TuneIn, and our own Amazon Music. But one of the things about Amazon is we believe in customer choice. So if you have a service... Uh, today, you can go into your, uh, your companion app or onto your device itself, and you can set uh, Spotify as your default. Why do we do that, even though we have our own music service? It's because we fundamentally believe in customer choice. And if you let customers choose the content or the things that they want to buy, ultimately or at some point in the future, we think we'll be able to monetize that. We may not monetize it today, but we believe building that trust with the customer is part of a future uh, uh, revenue stream for us. And so we make it available. So you could set, uh, I listen to, to um, Spotify because like I built all my playlists in Spotify and that's my default. But early on I realized there was functionality that doesn't work in Spotify. So for example, if you say play sad country songs from the 80s, that only works in Amazon Music. So we think that we'll get customers to come to our service if we build and design more magical ones. And so this forces us to really be ahead of our own curve and delighting customers. Uh, this slide just to gives, gives you an idea of you know, some of the 40,000 uh, skills that we have. Obviously, I can't fit 40,000 onto one slide, but just kind of imagine anything that you want to do, you can do through a skill, whether it's ordering a pizza or a burrito, uh, to getting tickets to a game, to checking the balance of your credit card or your savings account, um, to, um, again, uh, checking into a flight. All of that can all happen now through voice, through skills. Um, how do you find these today? You go to, uh, we have a uh, skill store, uh, standard paradigm that you would sort of see in a, in a mobile world. Um, this is one of the areas where I think, you know, as we just started, initially it was really difficult for people to find skills. This is one of the areas that we've spent a lot of time working on because nobody knew how to do this, right? That's all voice-based. Like, we didn't even know how people would rate skills. Like, when you think about it, like, it's not like somebody goes on to Amazon.in and they buy a product and they get to rate it, right? Because you're on the computer already, so it's really easy to do. And so we get a lot of good ratings, customer feedback, and that helps other customers make the right choices. But in voice... You don't have, the person isn't already sitting there. So how do you do that? We have to invent new ways. And I don't know that we've learned everything yet. I think there's a ton of stuff that we have yet to learn, like notifications. When's the right time to, to not notify somebody? Maybe there's a weather event. Maybe we should come into their homes and let them know there's a weather event or an earthquake. Maybe not. Maybe people would find that creepy or they, they don't want that. Um, maybe we tell them that their Amazon package has arrived at their doorstep and we send them a photo of the package sitting on their doorstep. 
um, those kind of things. We have to think through, we have to learn, we have to see what customers like, what they don't like. Um, and this is going to be part of it. And I think if you looked at some of the first iterations of our store, you'll see we didn't know exactly how to do this. We for sure didn't know how to manage 40,000. And so we'll get better at this, and, um, and there's more to see uh, in the future. Obviously, you can access Alexa and, and the beauty of Alexa on your phone. Um, we have a companion app. The code name for that is Fox, but it's the Alexa companion app. And you can use it to do things like connect accounts. So if you have like a Spotify account and an, and an uh, Amazon account, you can connect the two in the app. You can also set preferences, defaults, those kind of things, um, as well as name different things. So if you have a set of lights in your house and you want to say, turn on these lights and not those, you can name them and do all of that in the actual app. Because we realize voice, as good as it is, there's times when you need other things. You need touch. And like the new Spot product that we have that just was released in India in April, no, something like that, not that long ago, uh, is a touch-based device. It's multimodal. It's touch and voice. And the idea of being able to do both, uh, there's a lot of utility in that. And you'll see more and more of that as our products come out. I talked about skills. Skills are amazing. Um, in the US, we just launched this thing called Blueprints. It allows you to basically build a skill in like an hour or half hour or, or less even. Um, and we did one at our house just for fun. Um, but generally, for a person to build a skill, it's a very intuitive process. You can prototype it. You can get this. You can make this in, in I would say, a matter of hours or days. Get a first iteration up, test it, see how it um, reacts uh, see how customers are using it, look at the data, iterate again, and then refine it, and then come out with uh, what I would call a more finished product. Um, to do that, we have a bunch of tools, we have a bunch of telemetry that we give you, and there's a set of design guidelines and a set of uh, documentation and APIs that we make available to you as part of building those skills, um, and we try to make it super easy. Um, whoops, sorry. So how do you do it? Um, you know, kind of as I just talked about, you can begin uh, by doing something simple, like like take an example of find, figuring out what your core functionality is. You analyze, you build it, you analyze the feedback associated with it. You'll expand the feature set inside the skill itself, and then you'll think about how you want to innovate around that feedback for customers. Again, Amazon believes that customer feedback is probably the best way to figure out how you want to take your product or your skill or your app forward. And so over time, you're able to then iterate and then enhance your skill and add functionality to it. Some of the first skills that we had were very unipurpose. They did like one little thing. So you can imagine an airport skill that might give you uh, departure times, but it might not give you airport uh, security wait times. Adding both of those together is much more useful to a user because those are two similar kind of things that they're going to want to do if they're checking in on an airport. So what happens under the hood? I'm going to go through this really quickly. Um, what I want to show here is actually it's a super complicated process, and we try to make it very simple. So when there's a, uh, a first audio uh, that the device is sitting there, and you say something like, Alexa, is it hot outside? The audio takes that. It goes to a signal processor, and we determine, first of all, we, we want to know where the sound is coming from. If you have an Alexa, you'll see there's a ring a blue ring on the top. And the, the, the blue ring will turn to the person who's speaking and will beamform on that person. And we'll take that signal and we'll run it through a wake word engine. And we'll send that wake word at the same time up to the cloud. We'll say, did the person say Alexa? And if they did, we'll turn on the microphones and then begin to record a signal that we then send uh, to uh, our ASR, so the automatic speech recognition engine. It converts it from speech to text, it then figures out, OK, what's the natural language uh, command or intent that's happening here? What are they what's the person trying to do? And we determine in this case that someone's trying to get the weather. So we know what the intent is. They're trying to get the weather. And so we pass it to the domain skill or the intent engine that figures out what that response is. So it figures out, where is this device? This device is in Mumbai, India. And so it says, OK, the person is trying to figure out what the weather is in Mumbai. And so I'm going to return the speech. Wow, it's super hot and humid here today. 
Um, and that's how it works under the hood. And all of that is happening in milliseconds, of course. One of the things that we've done on this program we just launched is we've tried to figure out how to create a virtuous cycle of people developing skills and making these skills available into the Alexa ecosystem and making them and the customer experience all that much better. And so we set up seven categories of skills and we've um, paid out already millions of dollars since we launched to people who've built like the best skill in this area. And I don't know that we're going to do that forever, but it's a great way to sort of kick stuff off. There's been some articles about kids who've built skills and made, you know, tens of thousands of dollars just as like, like a summer project for themselves. So it can be pretty amazing. Again, you can imagine other paradigms where you're kicking off this developer ecosystem. You're kicking off this third party ecosystem. You're kicking off a set of OEMs and ODMs in a world and it's just starting. And that's really where we are. And so some of what we're doing is igniting that, not only in the fund, but in the average work that we do on a daily basis is to do that. So this is a picture. It just shows some of the products um, that we're currently working on. And I had another picture where I talked about the category range. The reason I have this picture is just to look at the actual form factor range. Like GE built this light, the big blue ring. They actually built a light. It's super beautiful. If you haven't seen it, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, product. And you'd want to have it in your home. You'd want to have it out in your living room. Um, and it's a, the whole device is Alexa enabled. So you can ask it just like you would a dot or an echo uh, and it responds and you have this big beautiful uh, light. Obviously, there's also form factors like the Ecobee 4 thermostat that you see. It's kind of in the middle there, black thermostat. Uh, this is an interesting product. It's a thermostat. You guys you imagine like a Nest thermostat, an Ecobee thermostat. This one is Alexa enabled and we thought, oh, we know how customers are going to use it. They're going to say, uh, Alexa, turn the temperature up, right? That's going to be the most common usage. Turn the temperature up, turn the temperature down. What's the temperature? In fact, that's the third most common usage. Most, com most common on that device, people play music. We never would have thought that. We had no idea, right? It doesn't have a great big speaker. It's got a relatively small, modest speaker. But just because the device is in someone's home and it's near where they live, it gives them an opportunity to have an ambient experience, or an ambient music experience. And so that's what they're using it for. So one of the things I always tell people is never assume you know what customers are going to do. Put a product out there. Let people use it. You'll be surprised. You'll be completely blown away. Um, one of the things that drives our engineers crazy is one of the most popular uh, features of Alexa is timers and alarms. It's like super easy to develop, right? Timers and alarms. Set a timer. But it's like the usage of it is totally it's like it's 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 off the charts. Why? It's super useful. People just love it. You set a timer to make eggs or cooking or whatever it is, and people love it. Um, and so, we never would have thought that either. So as you're thinking about AVS and the kind of products that you could potentially be doing, uh, this is one of the things that I often tell people is just don't imagine you know how customers are going to use your things. Uh, we've already made a bunch of announcements um, in, the, in the few months that uh, we've been around, or a or, uh, few years now. Um, but there's been some really iconic examples of these products. Uh, if anyone has had a chance to see the Sonos One product, it's a phenomenal speaker. It's really incredible. We make our own speaker, the Echo um, smart speaker. But the Sonos product with AVS is just incredible. Um, we have, uh, we worked with LG to make an InstaView fridge. So the fridge is AVS enabled. You can be standing in front of it. You can add milk or rice or whatever you want to your shopping list. You can ask it what the weather is. Uh, we have wearable devices, Android based devices. Uh, we have it on phones like uh, Motorola um, and Huawei phones. And then obviously we have devices like the Eufy Genie uh, that's a small form factor dot like uh, speaker. Uh, and device, and then obviously in cars as well. So think about this part of our vision, which is we believe in the future, Alexa devices will be everywhere and all around you. And so today, you may only interface with an Alexa device that's like in your living room, because you may only have one. 
But we started selling them in packs of six, and people put them everywhere. They were in their kitchen. They were in their playroom, their den. And that changed people's usage. So as these devices show up as a thermostat, or as they show up in someone's house as a lamp, or as they show up in someone's ha- house as a light bulb, right, all of a sudden usage is going to change as well. And how it's going to change, we have no idea. We'll figure that out, or we'll learn as we're doing. One of the last aspects or, that I want to talk about about AVS generally is that it's cloud-based, and so it's constantly learning. It's constantly getting better. A few months ago, uh, we added uh, enhanced conversational uh, interactions. So you could say, to my previous example, uh, who's Donald Trump? You can now say, and how, who is his wife? And it figures out that you were just talking about Donald Trump, so it must be Donald Trump's wife. And you can say, how old is she? And how old is her son? And it's going to figure out all of that because it knows who you're talking about. It's going to figure out in the way that humans have conversational interaction. It'll figure out the same kind of thing. That's just one example. There's a lot more. We've added multi-room audio, the ability to, um, to play music in multiple rooms and control it just by uh, your, your, your voice. So across the board, uh, Alexa is getting smarter. We've even done things like our initial, one of our initial products was a tap. It was a push-to-talk product. We updated it over the air so that when it has enough battery, it's uh, a far field device. So you could speak to it from 30 feet away or 35 feet away, and it's still going to respond. One of the key aspects of what we try to do is really make it easier to develop for AVS. And our intent there is to remove every barrier that we can to getting a product, an AVS-enabled product, out into the market. Some of those are technical things. We have a whole engineering group and solution architecture group that's there to help our partners. Obviously, we have business people like myself and my team. Um, We have marketing people to help them co-market, PR people to help them get the message out. Um, This is something that we're building, and we're building it with our partners. So across the board, everything that we can do to help our partners by providing reference design, code, better SDKs, better documentation, we're going to do. Today, you can see all of our code to build a prototype. It's all on GitHub, all of it. Uh, if you want to license our, um, our 7 mic array, the one we use inside of our product, we make it available to you. So it's amazing, I believe, like what we're trying to put out there and how we're trying to partner. And everything that we do is about helping people get their products to market uh, faster. I'm going to skip forward. I'm, I'm getting close to my time. Uh, but across the board, all of these resources that we make available, we make available to all partners. So we have a set of managed partners, the, the larger ones that uh, require more handholding because they're, they're doing bigger products. But every time I'm at a trade event like CES or Mobile World Congress, I'll walk around and I'll see people who've built products that I've never seen before. They've never interacted with my team. They've been able to build the products all on their own. Um, as our team grows, when I first started, um, I had a really small team. My team is now, I don't know, five or six times what my team was when I first joined. Um, but across the board, if, as we get bigger and as we are able to help more and as our SDKs get better and as our documentation get better, all of this will just improve and the time to market will be reduced. Already, we feel like we've reduced the time to market by over 30%. And I've seen people from the first day that they thought about building a product and I had a conversation with them, 70 days later, I've seen uh, actual finished manufactured products. It can be as short as 71 days. In a hardware world, that's pretty amazing. And then we've got a bunch of tools that we make available, um, everything from SDKs to reference designs, hardware reference designs. Uh, We have a set of chip and system integrators. We work a lot with companies like Libre and Sugar uh, and Link Play and DTS uh, PlayFi. So um, the chip on the far left is a full AVS implementation on a chip on an SOC. Um, so we've got some really interesting things. On, from an ODM perspective, uh, we work with partners like Tonley and Wistron. For companies who want to get a product early out to market to test, we provide this as an option because they can basically take it as a white label solution and get it quickly into market and something that they can, again, get customer feedback on right away. Uh, we have a, uh, our original uh, piece of code was this SDK, the, um, the dev kit for AVS and the AVS API and SDK. That's obviously 
constantly being revised. The latest version is version 1.7. We just made that available. Um, and it's a set of uh, C++-based code. But interestingly, it's extensible to any hardware platform. Uh, and all of the hooks for audio and audio players, it's all in there. So the idea is you don't have to be like this, uh, this computational linguist or this person who knows ASL or NLU. All of that we do for you. So through the SDK and our partnership, uh, hopefully we demystify all of that and allow you to get to market uh, quickly. Here's some examples of the dev kits I was telling you about. The one on the far left at the top is Amazon's actual kit, uh, 7 mic array. This is probably you know, one of the more expensive ones, but it allows this interaction that if you have an Alexa device, you know you can talk to her from like 35 feet away uh, to the point that we had multiple people when I told you we, we started selling them in bundles of six. People would have two in a home and we were like, oh my God, what do we do now? Both of them are gonna respond. So we created a technology that we call ESP that we beam form from both devices. And then whichever device has the strongest signal, we turn off the other device and we respond with the closest device. So in a home, if you had four devices and you said, Alexa, play Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash would only come out of one of your four speakers, actually the one closest to you. In the future, again, you can imagine that we want to have logic in there that says, what's the best speaker in the house? Or what's the best speaker in the living room? Or what's the best screen that I can display this device on or this content on? Um, and all of that, again, is stuff that we have to learn and build in the future. Uh, you can prototype today. This is one of the things we actually do seminars where we have people sit down and they sit with a bunch of Raspberry Pis and within three hours, or two hours, actually, they build end-to-end -end an AVS-enabled device, again, with our code. Uh, you can do that today. You can go on Amazon.in. Uh, I know you can on Amazon.com. I assume on Amazon.in. You can actually order that kit and then download the code from GitHub uh, and make it happen. Let me just briefly talk about the launch process. Once you've built a product, um, we want to get behind it. So if you're a, a, a small or even a large company, um, Amazon's going to get behind your product because we want those AVS products out into the market. And so if you look at what we did, not only with like Sonos to help them launch the Sonos One product, but across the board, even with, with, um, with companies like Eufy, Eufygini, Bose, Jabra, uh, others. Like we've done a ton uh, to help them move their products. In the U.S., we ran a campaign, a massive campaign with Dish. Uh, and uh, again, that was us trying to get behind their new products. Marketing activities. Here's some examples of what we can do above the fold uh, in promotion and sales. We get the Amazon uh, marketing services group behind it. Um, and we have a bunch of detail pages for the products that we would add the content to. So again, all of this is free and is part of what we do for our third-party ecosystem. And we think there's great benefit here. This is, this is a way that you can really get your product in front of a lot of people's eyes and show them the magic of it and have them uh, get excited about it and buy. Um, I say we're only three years old. One of the things you can imagine is we work super hard on languages. We work super hard on launching new, new, uh, new geographies. When I joined, it was just US-based. Uh, within that year, we launched in Germany, UK. Uh, we've since launched in India, Japan. Um, we're about to launch. Uh, we've announced that we're uh, coming soon to France and other European countries. Um, and we've added Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, uh, and I'm probably missing some other ones. Um, beyond that, I think over time, we're going to look at adding more languages and more subsets of languages. So you can imagine uh, in India, uh, going beyond what we currently support today in company in countries like uh, or regions like Latin America having let's say Mexican Spanish or um, North American or American Spanish as well uh, two other quick technologies I want to talk about one is the uh, Alexa for mobile accessories this is one of the brand new things that's in dev, dev preview right now this allows you to have Alexa experiences on a Bluetooth enabled device it's super easy to enable this and very you, your time to market is super quick. So if you have a headset or you have any Bluetooth-enabled device, this is a great way to have a, another device run the actual actual computational part and then put it up to um, to to uh, uh, to the playback um, through Bluetooth. The last thing I want to talk about is Alexa in the car. 
um, we spend a lot of time, we believe that people spend a lot of time in cars. And cars are really complex. It's, it's kind of like a home that moves and that still has a lot of the same things. You still have some of the smart home things like rolling up and down the windows, but you have to add in navigation. You have to add in presence. You have to know like where you are. And all of that we make available in uh, what we call Alexa for car. And this is something that we're just developing. And in a typical Amazon fashion, we think this is so unique that we've actually spun this out as a separate business in the same way that we spun out AVS initially. And the last thing I'm going to end with is the customer life cycle. Obviously, how do you do this? You register as a developer. Uh, we, you review your project or not. If you want to, you can review it with us. Um, you can grab our resources, decide which ones of those help you get to market quicker, which ones of those demystify the process for you. Um, if you want to have something that plays music, it, uh, we ha it has to be certified. So we, we go through that part of the process. But then you launch your product, and we get behind it. So at any point in this, we can be super involved, we can be super helpful, or you can do this all on your own and bring out a magical product. And so with that, uh, I want to thank you all, and thanks for your interest in Alexa.